Welcome back to the book of Exodus. We're in chapter 20 and today verses 4, 5, and 6. We're now in the Ten Commandments. We're looking at the second commandment today. And here's those four, those uh, verses 4 to 6. You shall not make for yourself an idol or any likeness of what is in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the water under the earth. You shall not worship them or serve them for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children on the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing loving kindness to thousands to those who love me and keep my commandments. So this is, we're going to talk here about the second commandment. Now, you might already notice quite, quite an interesting relation between the first commandment, you shall know other gods before me, and the second commandment, which uh, means to have other gods or to cr create other gods. So this is ruling out no idols. You can't have any idols. You can't make any likenesses of, of creatures to worship them. And then there's two things here. They're not to be worshipped or served. Not worshipped or served. And that's kind of like an overlap, like a double thing. And yet those are distinct ideas and can be distinct ideas. You're not to bow down to them. You are not to serve them. And you know, the, the, when you read about these ancient idols and idolatry back in that time, you find that a lot of these people, uh, they made these idols. And once they did their ritual uh, speaking over the idol, it was understood that that idol, uh, the god that that idol, the specialization that that god represented, uh, whether he was for fertility or whatever it was, once you had sort of done your, your duty to kind of get him rolling, now you just had to basically feed, provide food for the idols, food for the gods, because gods could do basically everything, but they couldn't feed themselves. And if you did your part, then he would bless you and do the thing that you're supposed to get from that particular god. And so it was kind of a way to uh, worship God on the cheap, right? You didn't have to do a lot. You just had to feed him and you'd get all the benefits. God here is calling his people, however, into a personal relationship, a moral and ethical relationship, and so God wants them to be holy. God's not calling them to do rituals. God is calling his people to be holy. Okay, so he is, this is, I think, a, a key thing, a key reason why he's against idolatry. Besides, there's many reasons to be against idolatry. But the, but the cheapening of spirituality that comes with just worshiping a little idol, just you feed it and you get all the benefits and blessings, supposedly. God knows that's useless to them. It's untrue. It's false. It, 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 it bends the mind. It, it causes you to think wrongly about God, wrongly about holiness. God is calling the people up to holiness. And this is the fundamental reason why idolatry is not allowed, because it's kind of a, a shortcut. It's a cheap cut. It's a, it's a way to worship God on the cheap. God isn't, isn't doing the cheap thing. God is calling you and I up higher and higher. He's calling us up to holiness so we can't be having the worship of other gods. Now, he actually says here he's a jealous God. That's the translation we usually get. Underneath this in the word originally, it, it sounds like it really means kind of like red, like red in the face, like if you were blushing. And so God is, is coming into a personal walk with, with the people, and he regards them as his special distinct uh, people. So you can't mess with God's people. He's in like a marriage relationship with them. So this is, uh, it's, it's not that he's a vicious, controlling type, uh, not at all. But if you are in a covenant relation with God, there's now commitments that he has to you and you have to him. And anybody who's going to mess with you has to go through him first. So this is a serious deal. Finally, I want to say something about the last part of these verses. Uh, God visits the iniquity under the third and fourth generation of those who hate him, but he for a thousand generations, he likes for those who keep his commandments. He, he de demonstrates love toward them. Now, isn't that unfair? Well, if you go to Deuteronomy 24, verse 16, uh, Ezekiel 18, there's many texts where we find out that God does not punish uh, people for the sins of their ancestors. Of their God does not punish people for the sins of the family members who've gone before them. God punishes people for their own sins. And everybody has enough personal sin that you don't, you don't have to go back and, and dig up and get Adam's sin and add that guilt in the mix. Look, you, there's enough guilt you and I have done to be punished and to lose our salvation. And we all need salvation, all of sin and come short of the glory of God. So we all need to draw close to him. And some people think, well, this sounds like God is putting extra punishment on these other generations. But wait a minute. Uh, the Bible explicitly says God doesn't do that kind of thing. Now, the results of sin can affect you different generations out. You have different genetic things you inherit that aren't good because two or three generations back, your ancestors were doing this bad, crazy thing or they had this bad diet. 
So there are things that affect us that way that are just kind of part of the fact that we're living in a world of sin. But I want you to notice that uh, if the other generations participate in the same sins as the parents, yeah, they, which tends to happen, right? Kids tend to do the same as the parents. Then they're going to get the same punishment. That's all this is saying. By the way, do you notice the contrast? The contrast. Verse 6, but showing loving kindness to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. So there's a contrast here between the, the lowest and the highest numbers you could have in the Bible, right? Between three or four generations, contrasted to a thousand generations, uh, what God wants to do is show love a thousand generations out instead of visiting the iniquity on a few generations out. God prefers the latter. So don't participate, you and I, the word to us, don't participate in the sins of your parents. Don't add any new sins. Be uh, connected to the God of heaven and earth because this commandment is, hasn't ended. This is still a commandment today. Be careful when you look out in your garage, when you look at the shelf, when you look at the electronic devices you, you buy or own. Be careful you have no other gods before him, uh, whether they're small and have rectangular shapes either, right? All right, see you tomorrow morning.